The divine knows that you need food. The divine knows that you need clothing. It's a deep, beautiful promise. The divine knows what you need. Before you even think to ask, the divine knows what you need. And this is a reminder that just as the flowers receive what they need to bloom, just as the birds receive what they need to fly, you receive what you need to bloom. You receive what you need to soar. And it is up to us to open to that, to allow ourselves to receive. Good morning, welcome, a thousand welcomes. It's such a great gift, such a great joy to meditate together. And we are meditating today on the wonderful topic, embrace each moment. So we'll talk a little bit about what happens when we embrace each moment. And then we'll also give ourselves entry points, like invitations, reminders, opportunities to embrace each moment, to remind ourselves this is possible, like as a human, in a human body, with human emotions and human thoughts, this is possible to embrace each moment. So one of the teachings comes from Luke, chapter 12, verses 31 to 32. And I'll just say, if you're joining us for the first time, we are a meditation community in the yogic tradition. We share teachings from non-dual awareness in the yogic tradition. And we also share core universal teachings from many different traditions. And so that's what I'm doing, sharing here from this amazing teaching offered by Jesus in Luke. And the teaching is this, seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added unto you. Fear not, it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. And this is the passage, I invite you to go back to it. If you've read it before, read it as if you're reading it for the first time. If you've not read it before, it will be for the first time. So you're on a discovery mission. But this is the process where Jesus is talking to his students and his students are pretty clearly feeling fear. And they're pretty clearly feeling fear about, I need food, I need clothing. And what he says is, the lilies of the field bloom, and even Solomon was not arrayed in such beauty as the lilies of the field. And he also says, the birds of the air fly, and the divine knows all about them. And he says, the divine knows that you need food. The divine knows that you need clothing. It's a deep, beautiful promise. The divine knows what you need. Before you even think to ask, the divine knows what you need. And this is a reminder that just as the flowers receive what they need to bloom, just as the birds receive what they need to fly, you receive what you need to bloom. You receive what you need to soar. And it is up to us to open to that, to allow ourselves to receive. The divine is saying, Jesus is saying, it's the divine's good pleasure to give you what you need to bloom. It is the divine's good pleasure. It is joy and generosity for the divine to give you what you need to soar. So it is up to us to let go of identifying with limitation. It is up to us to let go of feeling cut off from that support, which would allow the light in ourselves to bloom. Let go of feeling the pain that we hold onto. And I wanna just acknowledge humans experience pain. So the yogis say, if you are a human, you will go through time and space, you will experience pain. You will experience pleasure also. The yogis say, don't identify with either. Don't hold on to either. Don't be afraid of either. Wear them lightly, but also be willing to let them go. Be willing to not identify with them. Swami Shankarananda said, it is not possible to enter the kingdom of heaven carrying pain. So the kingdom of heaven is here. It's with us and it's within us. And we actually block ourselves from feeling the presence of the kingdom of heaven if we're holding onto pain, if we're carrying pain. So one of the things that we can do, you know, like when you come in from rain, for example, if you've been wearing a rain jacket, you take off your rain jacket and you sort of just like let it go. And then you're dry in your inner space. 
Do that with pain. Allow yourself to say, yes, in the realm of time and space, this human self has experienced pain, but I'm going to leave that at the door. I'm not going to carry that into the sanctuary of my heart. I'm not going to wear my muddy shoes into the temple of my heart. I'm going to leave them at the door. So I was smiling. I was remembering this mom. I think this was in March of this year. She was telling me about sending her daughter off to school in the morning, and she actually dressed her daughter in two pairs of jeans and <laughs> two shirts. And she said, I was so glad that I did because my daughter came home at the end of the day. One pair was completely mud encrusted. And the underlayer was clean. <laughs> so she was able to walk in the door and be clean. And then she was carrying this bag of completely mud encrusted clothing. And so that's an example. Like when we go out there into time and space, we have the opportunity to be covered in mud, to be covered in rain. And then we also have the opportunity to leave it at the door, to not bring it into our home sanctuary temple that is always here with us and within us. Welcome. My name is Dhruv. I have the honor of serving as a community teacher here at Awake Yoga Meditation. We believe it is possible to live in joy and freedom every day. If you like the content you are about to watch, please like, share, subscribe down below. Thank you and enjoy. And Swami Shankarananda says, one day you will love yourself so much that you will lay down the pain you have been carrying. And so this is just reminder, invitation, opportunity. I am willing today to love myself so much that I will lay down the pain I have been carrying. I will love myself so much that I will not identify anyone else with the pain that they have been carrying. I will love myself so much that I will embrace this particular moment right here, knowing that as I do, I make it possible for the divine to give me that kingdom of heaven realization and reality right here, right where I am. And so just to love yourself forward patiently and steadily and kindly, non-judgmentally, if it's hard to lay down the pain, just say, I choose, and I allow the divine to let it be as easy and fun as possible for me to set this pain down and for me to not keep carrying this pain. The Bhagavad Gita tells us, this is the voice of the divine speaking to each of us. So another way of saying that is, this is the light within us speaking to each of us. One who serves me by fulfilling my purpose with unswerving devotion passes beyond the gunas and becomes fit to realize oneness with Brahman. So I'll say that again. One who serves me with unswerving devotion. It's just a reminder. Dedication and devotion to being of service help us to move beyond human experiences. Dedication and devotion to being of service. If we are genuinely dedicated to being of service, we will just transcend our own personalities and we will transcend other people's personalities too. And the Gita describes this as when you do that, you pass beyond your own energy patterns. So the gunas are just your energy patterns. Every human has them. Every human family has them. And so what this tells you is that part of the process of gaining self-mastery, which is what we do as yogis, is learning to be wise and harmonious and loving and balanced in relation to your own energy patterns. And if you're able to do that, if you're able to transcend them, rise above them, then you're able to also transcend and work beyond anyone else's energy patterns as well. One of the funny teachings that Swami Shankarananda used to say, and he used to say it, very pointedly, he would say, get over it <laughs> in about that tone. And then sort of like randomly throughout the meditation, he would like share a teaching from the Gita. And then he would say, yes, I know you've experienced misery. Get over it. <laughs> so, so if you can just remind yourself like with a sense of humor, I'm the one who can do this. Like the divine in me will make this possible for me to get over it. And I'm willing to let it go. Like I'm willing to lay it down. I'm willing to move beyond it. I'm willing to get over it. And so keep your sense of humor. It's an amazing, amazing gift to have a teacher who just reminds you, get over it. <laughs> like, yes, I understand that happened. 
move beyond it. And so if you can keep that sense of humor and keep that wisdom, it just helps you move forward no matter what. And then having a practice community is also an incredible gift and support as well, because you see all humans from all backgrounds, all nationalities, all traditions, and everyone is just walking the walk showing that this is possible, like in every human body, in every personality, this is possible. It's possible to connect with that light and allow that light to share through us. And then the rest of this passage, and this is from the Bhagavad Gita, chapter 14, 26 through 27. The divine says, I am the abode of Brahman and that of transcendental perfection, immortality, the eternal dharma and absolute bliss. So the divine in each of us, that temple of light in each of us is the supreme. Each of us is continually connected to supreme love and support and wisdom. We're never separate from that omniscient, omnipotent, omnipresent energy of joy and delight and love. It's always here. So perfection is always here. Immortality is always here. The eternal path of light and the eternal path of unfolding ever more light using our talents, using our skill sets right where we are, that's always here. So for each of us, that's just the question is, how can I allow my talents and my skill sets, my body, my heart, my voice, my life to unfold light and to share light exactly where I am? And that's what Dharma is. That's your path for each of us. It is you being the true light that you are, just right where you are, generously, kindly, with love, with wisdom, with good humor. And when we remember that, then we're in that vibration of absolute bliss. So bliss is being one with the Om and allowing the Om to be fully here, allowing that omniscient, omnipresent, all blissful reality to be fully here and to share with us and through us and as us. The Mundaka Upanishad says, the wise realize the source of all that come into being, as the spider emits and withdraws its thread, as the herbs come forth from the earth, as hairs grow on the head of a living person, even so all that come into being in the world of duality have their origin in the imperishable reality. And so we're invited to identify with the imperishable reality, even in the midst of duality. Just reminding ourselves that all of this, all of this is a beloved expression of that imperishable reality. So I'm going to start to share some contemporary stories in just a moment, but I'll first share with you, Swami Shankarananda says this, the title Embrace Each Moment comes from him and comes from a teaching from him. Embrace each moment to discover you are being embraced by the immense timeless spirit of light, brighter than a million suns. So as you embrace each moment, what you realize is you are embraced by the immense timeless spirit of light, brighter than a million suns. Embrace each moment and the brightness of a million suns is here. And then the question is simply, how may I, as I embrace this moment, allow the brightness of a million suns to be through me, with me, as me, right here in this moment? So I'm going to share some contemporary stories, and that's one of the reasons I have this Kleenex up here. So I came across a couple of videos. I think they were both from 2022. Um, so just online videos of a human talking about how much he loved his mom, and his mom had left the body, so his mom had passed. And what he was saying is, grief does not go away. He was saying he was like 11 or 12 years into his grieving process. And he's like, it hasn't gone away. And he has said, what I have discovered is it's possible to live with it and play with it. And here's one of the ways that he has discovered to live with it and play with it. He basically doesn't hide it. And so I'm going to just share with you, this is his way of being true to the light in himself. So it's not that each of us has to adopt this specific practice, but to connect with the light within ourselves and say, what is true to the light within me? And what would be a specific practice true to the light within me? So he said for himself, what he does is he's very proactive and he's very constructive and creative with his grief in public. So he'll walk into a restaurant, and if he sees a group of women who are about the age of his mom having breakfast or coffee, he will say, 
my mom died. You're about her age. One of the things I would love to do is buy you coffee. It makes me happy. May I do that? And he said, you know, sometimes people are like, well, that's kind of weird. No, thank you. <laughs> but sometimes what happens is something like this. So he says, he walked into this restaurant one morning. There were this group of four women having breakfast. He was having his breakfast, and he got this inner impulse. He's like, I need to go offer to get their breakfast. And he was like, no, I just, I don't want to be annoying. I don't want to be embarrassing. But he kept having this inner voice within himself. He's like, I need to go offer to buy them breakfast. Walked over there. He's like, my mom died. She's about your age. I love getting breakfast because I can't get her breakfast. Can I get you breakfast? And one of the women around this table burst into tears. And she said, my son died. He's about your age. And so they stood up. And he was like, I was bawling in public with this complete stranger who was also bawling in public. And so for him, this is the true to the light within himself way of allowing himself to live with what is, to play with what is, and to do it in a creative, constructive, I mean, I would say that's a connection creating way of dealing with what he's experiencing. He's not allowing it to make himself feel cut off from community. He's living the reality of that teaching from the Buddha. You probably all have heard it, but there was a woman whose child died and she was just overcome by grief. And she went to the Buddha and she said, please, will you bring my child back to life? And the Buddha said, yes, on one condition. The only thing you need to do is get a handful of mustard seeds from any house that has not experienced death. And so she went from house to house to house to house to house to house to house, knocking on the door and saying, I just need mustard seeds from a house that has not known death. Can you give me mustard seeds? Every single house said, we would love to help you. We would love to give you mustard seeds. We have known death. And so she went back to the Buddha and she said, thank you for your teaching. I realize now there is not a human who does not know death. Will you please teach me how to know what is beyond death? Will you please teach me how to live in that brightness of the light of a million suns? And so the story is that she became a beloved teacher of the Buddha and that she realized that awakeness within herself, that light of a million suns within herself, which is undimmable, undiminishable, never leaves us. And so from the perspective of the soul, I'm going to start to take a step back. And I didn't even need my Kleenex, but I saw some of you. <laughs> There's, there is Kleenex up here. <laughs> Would you like it? There's probably Kleenex in the back as well. That, yeah, so there's, there's Kleenex right here. <laughs> You're welcome to take it around if you like. Um, so from the human perspective, this is part of the reality that we experience that, that unbearable pain, like the pain that humans cannot bear. And then we realize the divine in me somehow makes it possible to bear this pain. The light of a million suns somehow makes it possible for me to move forward, makes it possible for me to live with this in time and in time to play with this and to realize that it does not cut me off from other humans. So if I have one observation, it's been my great joy. I've taught young people for something like 26 years, thousands of them. Every single one of them, as I get to know them, they always feel there's something about me that just isn't quite right, that just somehow doesn't let me quite belong, that just somehow doesn't let me quite feel good enough, that somehow my family configuration or whatever I experienced as a child or whatever I'm experiencing right now, somehow I feel like I'm not quite enough, whatever it may be. For every kid, it's different. For every kid, it's unique. And it seems to just go with part of being here in a human body. And what happens over the course of the semester, these kids are very brave. And they share this with one another. 
they share like, oh, I always felt cut off because in my neighborhood, I was the only one who blank, whatever it is. It could be that you grew up with a different family configuration or you grew up with a different religion or you grew up with a different accent or you grew up with a different skin color or you grew up with a, whatever it is, neurodivergence or a physical condition, whatever it is. And what happens is, this is just like the story with the teaching of the Buddha. As soon as the kids name this out loud, they're like, oh, I'm exactly like every other human in this room. Every other human also feels like I don't quite belong. There's something in me that's not quite enough, that isn't quite lovable. And what happens then is there's this amazing way in which the humans in the room see you're incredible. They're able to look around and see everyone else being incredible, being brave, being beautiful, being courageous, being magnificent, being courageous, being bold, being generous, being insightful, being wise. And they say, oh, if every other human in the room is that, and they don't feel that way, I might also be fundamentally okay also. And so then there's just this acceptance. There's this way that everyone in the room knows, and it's so basic and so powerful to just know I am good enough. I am absolutely loved exactly as I am. And so just to allow yourself to know that, to be able to go directly to the light within yourself and to say, yes, human self, we experienced whatever amazing, beautiful, wonderful, magnificent things we experienced in our human journey. We also experienced whatever ridiculous, horrifying things we experienced in our human journey. That's part of it. We don't need to identify with that. We can let it go. And we can realize the basic truth of the light that is present within us, the basic goodness of the light that was within us, the basic wisdom and generosity and strength and encouragement and munificence and gladness of the light that is within us. And what happens then is we end up living in a way that we are patient with ourselves. We are kind with ourselves. We are present with ourselves. We are harmonious with ourselves. We are courageous with ourselves. And as we are able to be that with ourselves, that extends to our family members, it extends to our kids, to our parents, to our friends, to our partner, it extends to if we supervise people at work, if we report to people at work, if we have colleagues, if we have friends or neighbors, it's when we're walking through the post office or we're at the grocery store or we're riding the bus or the train or we're walking down the sidewalk, everywhere that we go, we're just basically in that energy of the light in me is true. The light in you is true. And that gives permission for everyone and everything to transcend personality structures. So back to the Bhagavad Gita. The Gita says personality structures are going to be here. If humans are here, they're going to be here. Move beyond them. Rise above them. Harmonize within your own personality structure, you will always be able to connect with the light in another. When that happens, then you are free. Then you are free to continually be the light, no matter what it is that you have experienced, no matter what it is that you witness others experiencing in time and space, you're simply continually turning to the light of a million suns within you and saying, this is here. There's nothing to fear. The light of a million suns is here. And then look at that room full of humans. The light of a million suns is right there in the heart of every single one of them. This means that no one is your enemy and no one is a stranger. This means that the light of a million suns in you already knows the light of a million suns in the other. This means that everywhere you go, you will meet friends even if you were meeting them for the first time. And this is what the Bhagavad Gita means when it says that each of us is reminded to be the friend of all beings. 
that light of a million suns within us, which allows us to be fully present every moment, which allows the light to shine in and through and with and as us, is the friend of all beings. So it is our friend, and it also helps us move in the energy of friendliness through traffic, through whatever the question is, through whatever it is that we are moving through in time and space. The light of a million suns is already there on the other side of what we appear to be facing in time and space. And so when we connect with the light of a million suns, we're already connected with the energy of the solution. And what happens then is it's like we build a bridge in consciousness and we walk in seven league boots over that bridge in consciousness. So we're just continually walking in the light. When we walk in this way, we are moving in that stream of continual spiritual abundance. And this is why that divine teacher says, fear not. The energy of the solution knows what you need. So be willing to disconnect from identifying with the energy of the problem. The energy of the solution is already present in a million and one ways. And so as soon as we disconnect from holding on to the energy of the problem, the million and one ways in which the energy of the solution can share becomes aware. It becomes present, it wells up, it rises up within us. And then we're just moving in this energy field of contacts and connections and opportunities and possibilities and energy and boundless horizons and limitless joy and abundance. And we're moving in that stream of light in one way, we are never moving because we are changeless. We are eternal. We are immortal. And then in another way, we are never done unfolding. So the question is, how much of that light of a million suns can I possibly share this moment, this breath, this heartbeat from moment to moment ongoingly? Thank God. And God bless us all.